Okay, so ultimately after speaking with everyone, you made the decision to arrest the defendant? Yes. Okay, and what did you charge him with? Um, that's violence, uh, that was a blender, I believe. Thank you, no further questions, Judge. All right, thank you, Ms. Mudd. Um, you did all the applicable paperwork in this case, didn't you? Yes. And um, one of the things that you fill out is an incident investigative report? Yes. And you did that in this case? Yes, uh, it's called a JC3. Okay. And um, you noted in there that you saw no visible injury on this Patrick, is that right? Uh, I haven't reviewed it, but I believe that's that here. Yes. I'll just give you a minute just to look over. Yeah. That's really the only question I'm going to have about it. It's on the first page there. Yes. Thank you. Um, so there was no visible injury to Ms. Patrick when you saw her? Not that I recall. Okay. Um, and you didn't find any clumps of hair anywhere? I, not that I recall. If you had found clumps of hair, you would have taken pictures of it. Is that right? Or some Most likely, yes. Okay. Did you take the pictures, or was it your, the other officer who took the pictures that evening? I don't recall who took the pictures. Um, um, also, make sure you keep your voice up. I can't hear you very well. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I don't recall who took the pictures that night. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, if you had put, if you had seen large clumps of hair missing from Miss Patrick's head, you wouldn't have written no visible injury. Is that right? Had I seen. If you had seen that, if she had told you that her hair was pulled out and there were large clumps of hair missing from her head, you wouldn't have put on this form no visible injury? I would say it would depend um, on the severity. Of, you know, I'd, I'd have to see the result of the, you know, the scalp and everything with the hair coming out. But you didn't see anything like that? that Not way. that I recall. Okay. Ms. Smith, I'm sorry, which form are you referring to? Oh, the incident investigative report. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Sure. Just, thank you. Just provide you Thank you. Um, okay. And so you uh, talked to Mr. Clack that evening. Yes. And um, we just heard the statement there. Um, and he said that, that before the hair pulling incident that she was coming at him. Is that what you heard? I, I must have missed that part that she was coming down. There were some parts that I just didn't understand. Okay. Um, I'll try to gear that back up here in a second. I'll get back to that. Um, did you ask him anything about, uh, if you don't remember him saying, she was coming at him. So, but she did say, or he did tell you that she had been yelling. Yes. And that she had been, um, uh, I mean, what it sounded like was that, from what I just heard, was that he, she was being aggressive towards him. Is that what you understood? Uh, from what I gathered, uh, they were in an argument that couples get into. Um, as far as, as how much the aggression was, I, I wouldn't be able to tell that. You didn't ask a lot of detailed questions about the hair pulling, did you? I don't recall. Did you hear that just now? Oh, in, in this video? Yeah. Not a, no, not, not in the video. No. Okay. And, and when you got there, tensions were pretty high among everyone. Is that pretty accurate? Yes. Um, people were upset? Yes. Okay. Mr. Clack seemed pretty animated, is that right? Yes. Um, but he didn't, he wasn't yelling at the victim in this video, was he? Or her family? No. Um, and he didn't, you know, try to brandish any weapon at you all when you came? No. Uh, he didn't try to attack you when, when you came? No. Um, and he, uh, you know, when you ultimately arrested him, he didn't resist that? No. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me.
anything further for you. I, I don't want to get your picture. So. Well, actually, I do because I wanted to play the part just a minute. Actually, I'm not going to ask you anything further. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Borders. Anything else? Um, yes, just briefly, Judge. Sure. Officer, do you recall the Liana JC3 for this incident? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Um, and can you kind of explain to the jury what is a JC3? Uh, a JC3 is the specific form, uh, a reporting form that is used just for um, domestic violence. Um, it just as the, it, it's basically a typical report for um, assault just a, in a different form uh, that goes straight to, to, to our detectives to handle domestic violence. Um, and that's really all I can okay. describe about it. Um, and so on a JC3, is there a part that marks, are there injuries visible or were there visible injuries yes. on a standard JC3? Do you remember what the JC3 in this case, what you filled out? Uh, or if I showed it to you, would that refresh your recollection? Yes, yes. Okay, this is your, I said yes. Um, and so now that you've had a chance to look at that, um, do you recall if you marked if there were any injuries or well, complaints of pain? I put yes. Okay, and what did you put? Do you recall now? The injuries visible? Yes. I checked yes. Um, you did. It was there, there was another section that says um, if there was any complaints of pain or any visible injuries where you can actually type stuff in. I'd have in. to see it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, uh, hair pulled out. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, can you clarify for the jury? Um, under the section that describes injuries, what did you type in? It says hair pulled out. Okay. Uh, thank you. No further questions. Anything else? <clears throat> Is it policy of your department to take photos of in any injuries on a victim? Yes. Um, and in that portion of the JC3, when it says to describe the injuries or complaint of pain, um, might you have put that only because that's what the victim told you? What the victim told me? Yes, when I, if there's a vic the victim tells me what the complaint of pain is, okay. yes. And so you might have put that there because she told you her hair was pulled out? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's also a portion on here, on the JC3, regarding medical attention. Um, do you recall whether she left in an ambulance that day? I don't recall. Can I show you this JC3 again? Yes. Um, can I approach? Yes. And it's a section of it there. Okay. You can just review that. Um, I'm just referring to the part um, that says medical attention. Oh, medical attention is checked now. Medical attention is checked now. It is checked now. Okay. 
And you don't recall taking any pictures yourself, is that right? I do not recall. But you don't know whether there were pictures taken by another officer or not? I, I believe there was. I just don't recall who it was or if it and I don't recall if it was me. Okay. Um, and we saw you were the one who was talking to and, and discussing things with Mr. Clack, is that right? Yes. And not so much with um, Ms. Patrick? As far as after the video we were shown, I don't recall. I mean, it was 2016. I don't recall the interaction that I had with Ms. Patrick. Okay. Thank you. No further questions for Judge. Thank you. All right. Officer, you may step down. Thank you. All right. Next witness on behalf of the Commonwealth. Uh, John Simpson, you can right. clerk. about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guys. I did. You may Ms. Borders. Can you please state your name for the record? Uh, John Simpson. Okay. What is your current occupation? I'm Assistant Supervisor of the Domestic Violence Intake Center's first shift. Okay. Um, and how long have you been working in that position? Fifteen years. And do you work for the, who do you actually work for? I know you're in the DVSC, but... Um, for the state, for the clerk's office. For the Jefferson County Clerk's Office. Correct. Um, and what does your uh, specific duties include? Um, maintaining the records and taking in uh, statements for protection orders. Okay. Um, and is one of your duties as a clerk to occasionally have to testify in court in regards to certifications of EPOs and DPS yes. family court files? Correct. Um, can you explain to the court what is an emergency protective order? Um, it's a protection order usually possibly restricting contact up for a period of 14 days until a court date uh, for a hearing. Um, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Commonwealth Exhibit 6. Um, Can you explain to the court what that is? Uh, it looks like an emergency protection order with Angel Patrick versus Edward Clack. Okay. Um, and does that fairly and accurately depict the protective order that the victim took that day? Yes. Okay. Um, and Judge, at this point, I'm going to uh, move to admit Commonwealth Exhibit 6. Just Subject to our discussion. Um, I just, can I just take a look at the actual document? Sure. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, so can you explain to the court who are the two um, parties that are listed? Um, Angel Patrick and Edward Clack. Okay. And who is the petitioner and who is the respondent? Uh, Angel Patrick is the petitioner in the case, Edward Clack is the respondent. And what does it mean to be the petitioner and the respondent? Uh, the petitioner is the one initially filing for the protection and the petition and seeking uh, protection. The respondent is the person that you're filing against and seeking protection from. Um, and is this a no-contact order that you're looking at? Yes. And what are the terms of this order? Can you kind of go through all the individual specifications? Yes. Um, that the respondent, uh, that the above name respondent, which would be Edward Clack, be restrained from committing any further acts of violence and abuse. Uh, that they be restrained from any contact with the petitioner, plaintiff, or other protected persons named in this order. Uh, it states that the additional terms are on the next page, which include that the above name respondent be restra restrained from any communication with the above name petitioner and all other protected persons by this order. That the above name respondent remain at all times and places at least 500 feet, not to exceed 500, away from petitioner and all other persons protected by this order and that the petitioner having established specific uh, demonstrable danger, the above name respondent be restrained from going to or within the distance specified of the locations described below. And shall I read off the locations as well? Um, yes, please. Um, the Medical Center, East Kentucky One Health, Louisville, Kentucky 40207. Uh, 3120 Faywood Way, Louisville, Kentucky 40215. And 2218 Thistledon Drive, Louisville, Kentucky 40216. Uh, also that the above named respondent be restrained from disposing of or damaging any of the properties of the parties. Okay. Uh, and how does this protective order 
come to be? Can you kind of explain the process a little bit? Um, initially, a petitioner will come down to file for a statement for a protection order, filling out the forms. That is then submitted to a judge. At the point that it's submitted to the judge, they will determine whether to grant a protection order till the court date, whether to just grant a court date, or sometimes to deny the case. In this circumstance, granting an order. Okay. And so, who was the? You alluded to this, but who was the person that actually granted this? Was it a judge? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, and as well, part of your. Oh, sorry, sorry. It, it was the trial commissioner on call for okay. that, but essentially the person acting in that capacity. Thank you. Um, now, as part of your court file, do you have a certified proof of service from the sheriff's office? Yes, I do. Um, so I'm going to show you what has been marked as Commonwealth Exhibit 7. Judge, may we approach? Yes. Actually, we just caught where I almost missed. Um, do you have, I need to redact a portion okay. of this. Okay. What's Marcus Commonwealth Exhibit 7? Please take a look at that. <laughs> Can you kind of explain to the court what that is? Uh, this is the proof of service that is sent to us by the Sheriff's Office once uh, the respondent is served with the case. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, 